Have you ever desperately wanted something about your life to change? Maybe you got a horrible haircut and wanted it to grow out again immediately. Or maybe it's something more serious. Maybe you've got a habit that you just can't seem to kick. Or maybe your family is falling apart around you and you wanna be part of the solution, but you have no idea how. If you have ever wondered how to change, you'll wanna stick around for the rest of this episode. Well, what's up, Bible nerds? Caitlin here, and I wanted to kick off this new year by talking to you all about something that a lot of people all around us are working hard to experience right now. If you know what I'm talking about already, go ahead and shout it out or type it in the comments below. You got it? Yep. If you said change or transformation, you are exactly right. We set New Year's resolutions or goals like that when we want to experience a change in our lives. But what happens when our willpower runs out? What happens when you miss a day or a week? Is it even possible to really change? I'm glad that you asked. There is a verse in the Bible, it's 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and it says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Their old life is gone. A new life has begun. What is this verse saying? <laughs> this verse is saying that those of us who belong to Jesus have become a new person. But what about those old thoughts that you still have? What about those habits that aren't really that healthy? Does that mean you aren't actually new? Well, let's read this verse wisely by remembering that Jesus is king and context is everything. And something I love about the context of this verse is remembering the guy who wrote it. His name was Paul but that wasn't always his name. Previously, Paul went by the name Saul, and Saul's mission in life was to destroy the way of Jesus. He literally wanted to kill followers of Jesus, to silence them, arrest them, and bring an end to their message, whatever the cost. What in the world could bring about such a change in a person like that? A change so significant that Saul, who became Paul, was literally the greatest missionary of the first century. He was a leading contributor to the New Testament, a central figure in the book of Acts, and a huge reason why non-Jewish people like me know about Jesus today. Well, what happened was Saul met Jesus and everything changed. Lots of people know this story and it's found in Acts chapter nine. We are gonna read that together. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation to arrest any followers of the way that he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. But as he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but they saw no one. And Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. In that single moment, the trajectory of Paul's life changed forever. Because of that encounter and his following decision to do what Jesus said, a murderer 
became a missionary. So how do we change? How can we experience real transformation like this? Well, we see Jesus and we respond with surrender. But even with such a dramatic, tangible example like this, the transformation wasn't completed instantly. How do we know? Well, Paul walks away from this encounter blind. Yes, he was seeing Jesus differently and more clearly than ever before, but there was still a healing that had to take place. And what most people don't know about Paul is that it wasn't just like smooth sailing from this point out. The believers around him were pretty skeptical of him. They needed to be convinced of the change that had taken place in his life. And even after that, Paul kind of disappears from the scene of the early church for a while. After this scene in chapter nine, Paul doesn't show up again until chapter 13. And the amount of time between those chapters is eight years. Yep, eight years passed between chapter nine and chapter 13 when we meet Paul again. Between the time when Paul had this radical encounter with Jesus and the time that he was actually sent out on mission to Antioch, eight years. What was happening during that time? Well, Paul's new life began in a moment, the moment that he met Jesus. But learning how to live that kind of life, it took time. It took reps. It took examples. It took practice. See, Paul spent time learning the way of Jesus from the people of Jesus. He spent time with Jesus. So transformation for us as followers of Jesus today is not really that different. We spend time with Jesus and his people. And the more we spend time around someone, the more we start to pick up their ways of doing and saying things. We actually change to become like them and we start doing what they do. Said simply, we change by being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus and doing what Jesus would do. So think back with me. What do you wish was different about your life? Where is an area that you want to experience change? You got it? For me, I wanted to become someone who didn't just say that I would pray for people. I wanted to actually follow through and be somebody who could be counted on to lock arms with and fight alongside people in prayer. But how did I change? Well, I looked at the way that Jesus treated people. And something about Jesus was he always allowed random strangers to stop him in his tracks and interrupt his plans. And he didn't get mad. He actually attended to them. I saw that in Jesus. And I experienced how he was available to me all the time. And the more I spent time with Jesus, I found the more interruptible I was becoming. Like I didn't get upset so much when plans changed or when people called me in the middle of the day or when someone texted me something heavy and hard out of the blue. And instead of responding with, wow, I'll be praying for that, I started pausing to pray right then or even asking the person if they'd be okay with me praying out loud right now. I started doing what Jesus would do and I experienced change in my life. And I believe that you can too. So be with Jesus, spend time with him and his people, see him for who he is and watch how he treats others. You might be saying, Caitlin, how in the world can I do that? Jesus doesn't actually go to my school in case you didn't know. Yeah, I know. Thankfully, the way that Jesus treated people is recorded in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you can read any one of those at any point in time if you need to know and see Jesus more clearly. So spend time with him. And as you do this, he'll transform you from the inside out you will become more like him. And from there, all it takes is practice. Get reps doing what he would do, loving people sacrificially, honoring people even when they aren't very nice to you. 
going above and beyond at home, being interruptible. And don't forget to come back here next week for another episode of Bible Nerds. But until then, keep on reading and stay nerdy.